Well, a very good morning, everybody. Welcome to uh, the International Church this morning. On this beautiful snowy day, it's lovely to have everyone with you. Well done for getting here safely. Um, it's been a slightly interesting, challenging morning this morning, um, but yeah, we can all pray that God's peace will be upon those of us who've been running around like slightly headless chickens this morning and um, can calm our spirits as we seek to come before him, come to the foot of the cross. And, and worship him. Um, it's kind of a really important day for the church, with it being the AGM is kind of the start of the church year, I guess. Um, and that made me think a lot about time this week. Um, this time last year, I had just arrived back in Bucharest after three months away. I had never yet performed on the, w well, played in the worship team here. Uh, it's been quite a roller coaster. I'm sure for many people here, it's been a heck of a lot more of a roller coaster year. I'm sure none of you at the end of January imagined what where life would have taken you. Um, yeah, in the in the year that's come since. Um, but whenever I'm a little bit concerned about what's going on in life and time and everything like that, I just like to read a few verses from Ecclesiastes three. So I'm going to do that now. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to re refrain from embracing. A time to search and a time to give up a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. What struck me about that this week was that if we're going through some of those times that are hard, there's a time for everything, which means that they're not going to be hard forever. If we're going through some amazing times, Okay, yeah, there will be challenges that, the, that, uh, that, they, that, that life will throw at us. But whatever we're going through, it's not permanent. The only thing that is permanent is God and his love for us. So in the spirit of that, I've got quite a lively worship set to wake us up this morning. Um, let's stand and sing together in praise of our God. We 
righteousness of God on which we stand. He will proclaim it to the nation. Every eye shall see, every ear shall hear. Let there be joy, let there be peace, let there be power, let there be praise, let there be joy, joy in the Holy Ghost. It was the freedom that we were set free, let every mountain be cast to the sea, let there be joy. be joy, joy in the Holy Ghost. Let there be joy, joy in the Holy Ghost. Jesus, hope of the nation.
take this moment of silence before we take up our offering in the next song and we just take a moment and we cry out either in our hearts or out loud in praise to you Lord for you are worthy of all our praise and so much more than we can ever give you. created here. I thank you for these people who are all here to seek you. Lord, we're from all over the world, but we have one common thing, that we love you and we want to worship you. Thank you for bringing us here. Thank you that you hear all our prayers and you respond to all our prayers. 
whether we voice them out loud or they're just in our heads and in our hearts. Lord, we thank you for the, the sacrifice of your son which enables us to connect directly with you and have a relationship directly with you. Lord, I just pray that your presence will fill every molecule of air that we breathe this week, every moment in our hearts that will remain focused on you and you will lead us the way you want us to go. is the air I breathe. <laughs> Actually, um,
Well, good morning. Good to see each of you this morning. So glad that you made it out this morning and the weather. Isn't that weather that Jesus has given us beautiful? Yes, my, my wife absolutely loves every minute of it. She loves the snow. I'm so glad that you braved it and made your way out this morning. As we get into our time together this morning, I do want to begin by giving just a few announcements. We've talked about our couples night that we're going to have here soon on the 10th, and I know several of you have already signed up for it, and I'm going to hand around the sign-up sheet again for anyone who was not able to sign up who would like to come. Please put your name down for us. Let us know that you'd like to come. We're making provision for that, so we need to know who will come to make sure that we have enough food, that we have enough provisions for those who will come and, and participate that evening, so we'd love to have you sign up and join us here on on Friday the 10th at 7 p.m. We know it's going to be a wonderful time together, so please put your name down if you'd like to come. We'd love to have you join us that evening. Also, guys, as we've talked about our spring retreat, it will soon be on us, and that's going to be the weekend of the 24th to the 26th up near Sinai in the same place that we went before. If you would like to come, I want you not only to make a mental note of that, to put it on your calendar, but here in a few weeks, we're going to start actually taking down the names of those of us who will participate and the reason primarily is this, is that we have a down payment up there with the retreat center. They're saving the places for us, but we need to give them about 10 days notice who will actually be coming or we get charged extra. And so, guys, I need to know if you want to come. We'll, we'll be asking for your names here probably in about two or three weeks. And so be praying about that, and we hope that each one of you will be putting that on your calendar and setting aside that special time for each one of us as we go back up to the mountains to see what God will do in our lives. On March 24th to 26th, we'll put that on your calendar. And later Ladies, as I know has already been mentioned on March 10th to 12th, there is also going to be a time that's set aside for you, and we hope that you'll be putting that on your calendar as well. It's going to be up near Braun, and I know Nat is going to be getting you more details about that, so please put that on your calendar, and if you want more information about it, please talk to my wife. She'd be willing to give you all the information that you need, and I know that that will be a blessed time for you as well. And as my wife started to tell you about last week, in the month of, actually, right at the last month, or at the end of the month of April, I was going to say the month of May, but at the end of April, the International Baptist Convention, of which this church is part of, actually participates in a women's conference that participates with women from all over the globe. And so, ladies, if you would like to have more information about this, possibly to actually go with my wife to Spain to participate this year, she would love to talk with you about that. She would love to take a team of you over there. I know the ladies who have went in the past have been blessed by it. And so, ladies, if you'd like to go, please talk to Nathy. She'd love to get you information so that you can know how you can participate in that this year as well. Well, as we said, today is our annual meeting, and I have a little bit of extra for you as well as we will conclude our time together. But what I would like to do is I'd like to start our time together in prayer this morning. I can't think of a better way for us to begin our time. You know, the Lord actually tells us in his word that unless he builds the house, unless he builds the church, unless he builds the community, the, the community of believers in Jesus Christ, those that labor, they labor in vain. And, and we certainly want to be in the center of his will. Would you not agree with me? We want him to be guiding our footsteps. We want him to be guiding our way. So would you join me as we pray and ask him to bless our time and our meeting together? Father, we ask you today, as we come together, to seek you, to seek your will, to seek your path, your way forward. We pray that you would guide our steps. We pray that you would lead us down the path that is consistent with what you want for the international church. Lord, our desire is that this church would be a candlestick that would burn brightly for the gospel in our community. And so, Lord, the decisions that we make, Lord, we want it to be consistent with that because, Lord, we believe that that's what you would want us to do as we read your word. And so, Lord, we pray now as we meet together that you would guide us in that way, that it would be reflective of, of the work that you have started and the work that we know that you will complete. And we pray that as we do these things that you would be exalted. And we pray this now in Jesus' name. Amen. For some of you who have recently come on to the church here in the last year or so, some of this is going to be new, so I thought I'd just take a few moments and, and just kind of share with you a little bit of who we are once again for those of you who might not be completely aware of it. So let me just tell you a little bit about our mission. Our simple mission statement, which actually tells you a lot about who we are, simply states that our mission is to glorify God. And I want you to see very, three very specific words because these three words, we've tried to grow the ministry of the church around. Our mission is to glorify God by growing in Christ. 
That's the first thing. The second, serving well in and out of the church. And the third, sharing the good news with English-speaking believers or with English-speaking people in the community here in the city of Bucharest. Now, the reason that we state that is because that actually is reflective of our philosophy of ministry as well. So let me just flip over to that so I can kind of show you how we do what we do. We want each one of us to be in a growing daily relationship with Christ. It's the reason why we encourage you to participate, not just on Sunday mornings, but to find a connect group in the community that you can participate in as well. Because we want your walk to be something that is more than just a Sunday morning experience. We want it to be something where you're growing in the Word, you're growing in prayer, you're growing in your knowledge of your Savior and how you can actually take the good news, His message to those around you who need to hear it. And so one of the best ways that we know that that can be done is for you to actually be involved in a connect group. Our hope is, is that as we do meet, that we will then take the things that we're learning and we'll apply them. That's why we talk about serving our community, because we don't just want to be filling our head with facts. We don't just want to be filling our heads with knowledge. We want to be taking those things that we are learning as we're growing in Christ and taking them to the community around us and blessing those around us. We want to be serving maybe those, as, as some of you know, that are involved in different charities like Light Into Europe or, or I know our friend Kosti who works with orphan children here and there. You find different ways to go and be a blessing to those around us so that we can get the good news to those who need to hear it. And as you serve, occasionally, you might even have somebody say this, why are you doing this? Why are you willing to make these sacrifices for me? And then that's when you can say to them, I'm so glad you asked. Let me tell you why. And you get the chance to tell them about the one who changed your life, sharing with them the good news of Jesus Christ. That's what we're about as a church. That's why we say everything that we do, we want it to be about either growing, serving, or sharing. And so if you are new with us today, we want you to become familiar with those three terms because that's who we want to be as a family of faith. We want that to be reflective of who we are in everything that we do. And so that's why today what I would like to tell you, if, if you are not involved in a connect group, I'd like for you to come and talk to me. I'd love for you to find out how you can actually get involved in a connect group because that is where the initial steps of these things will actually take place. If you have a friend who maybe who doesn't know Christ that you would like to maybe eventually share, there's going to be other groups like Christianity Explored and some of these other groups that we have here in the community where we will actually be talking to them about the gospel of Christ. And so there are ways in which you can not only grow, but ways in which you can actually serve and share as well. So if you would like to know more about how you can get involved in one of those, I really would like to see you today. I'd like to show you how you can plug into one of these groups because these are the actual core. They're the essence of who we are. It's not so much about what happens here on Sunday. It's about what's actually happening Monday through Saturday. And so I would like for you to come and talk to me so that we can get you involved in one of those throughout the week. Well, as we said, we do have some business that we need to do today. And so I want to talk to you just a little bit about our leadership team. You are familiar with the people that are on the screen. Um, some of these men actually are, are more blessed than I. And so um, they, 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 they have, uh, uh, I, I guess my dad told me at one time that there's only, a, a, there's only a few perfect heads and on the rest of them he put hair. But I don't know if there's any truth in that or not. But, um, but, but, but the, the, the reality of it is, is that I'm so grateful to have had over these last years to be able to serve alongside both Stuart and Stan. They have been such a blessing to me. They have helped me, they have helped you, they have helped the church in multiple ways. But as Stuart's time, him and Deborah's time has come for them to transition, and as we know, they're getting ready to go to the United States, to go to Texas, to follow God's leading in their life. It's also opened the door for us to say, Lord, what do you have for us next? And so we've been praying, and as some of you are aware, as I've shared with you, We've been praying about potentially God leading us in a new path, maybe leading us towards new leadership in the church. And as we have, we've been praying, and, and I've had the opportunity to visit with my brother, um, Lewis, here for quite some time about this. And we've shared over coffee, and we've talked on different occasions about different things that are happening here in the church. And I've talked to him about the possibility of becoming part of the leadership team here at the church. And he's agreed with me on that, I hope. <laughs> so what I would like to do is I'd like, Lewis, if you can, to come on up here for a second. And what I want us to do this morning 
is I want us to pray with Lewis as he joins us with the leadership team. And I want us to pray that God will continue to guide Lewis, uh, uh, not, not Stuart, the Stuart is getting ready to go to the States, but Lewis, myself, and Stan as we continue to seek the Lord's face. Um, Stan, would you join me as well? This past week, as I shared this news with you, I've asked you, one of the things that I've asked you to do is I've asked you to consider Lewis joining the leadership team, and I asked you that if if anybody had anything that you wanted to share with me about or any concerns that you had to to privately message me to let me know what those were. And since I didn't hear from anybody, what I would like to do initially here for those of us who are a member of the International Church is I would like to simply say this. I would like to make a motion that we accept Lewis Maynard as a new member or as a new uh, elder of the International Church. Can I get somebody who is here this morning who is a member to second that motion? Emmanuel, thank you. Thank you. So we have had the motion seconded. So what I would like to do is to put it to a vote to the members of the International Church, all of those who would accept Lewis Maynard as a new elder of the International Church. If you could express that by simply putting your hand up. Wonderful. Okay, and anybody who would be opposed, you can do so by the same sign. Well, I can see that it has been warmly accepted. (laughs) So, can we spend a few moments blessing our brother and asking for God's blessing upon his life as he helps lead this church? Let's pray together. Stan, would you pray, and then I'll pray here in a second. Father, we love you, we worship and adore you, we praise your holy name. And Father, we just come before you this morning with Lewis in our minds, Lord, at this time. Father, we just thank you for him. We thank you for the great works he's already done in our fellowship here and beyond. And Father, we just ask you to surround him with your Holy Spirit, may indwell him and may he grow anew with us in our love for you. Father, we just bring these prayers to you in the precious name, the name above all names, the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, now I lift my brother up to you. I thank you for him. I thank you for how you've already been using him in my life. I thank you for his willingness to speak truth and to speak it sometimes even in ways maybe I I need to hear and maybe I just missed something. And so, Lord, I thank you for bringing a brother alongside me who can help sharpen me as a pastor, who can help me in my own walk. And, Lord, I thank you for his heart for your church. I thank you for his heart for the young people of this church specifically. Lord, I've seen you use him in a mighty way amongst them. And, Lord, I pray that your spirit would continue to rest heavily upon him as he helps guide our young people. Lord, I pray that the end result would be of his service here, fruit that would last, last for all of eternity. Lord, as these young people learn to love you and to follow you. So, Lord, I pray for your blessing upon him, upon his family, that all their needs would be met and that you would continue to use them for your kingdom. And I pray this now in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, brother. Looking forward to it. You know, one of the things through the years here at the church, we have went through seasons where we didn't know exactly what God had in store for us, but you know what? God has always been faithful. He has always provided good people to help lead. And so I'm so grateful, Lewis. Thank you. Um, well, as we said, we have another thing that we need to talk about this morning. We do need to talk about our new budget for 2023. And so what I'm going to ask for is a little bit of help. I don't know if I've got copies for everybody, but can you guys pass these around maybe and make sure that everybody gets one or at least maybe you can share them with people in the in the congregation. We need to walk through our, our budget commitments for the year. Actually, can you have one of those? The screen is so small, I'm not sure I can read it up there. Thank you. 
As this is passed around, I want to walk you through what our budget commitments are for this year, and then I want to open the table up so that you can ask questions. Any questions that you have are good questions. We do want to answer your questions, and then eventually we will bring the budget to a vote. I'll wait just a moment for, them, for everybody to get one, or so at least everybody can have one to share. Okay, as you can see, on the left side, we begin with what's called projects and programs. And I'm not going to go through in detail every single thing, although I am willing to answer questions that are more detailed if you have a question. I do want to point out a few things here so that you are aware of what each one of these are. As you can see there, as you make your way down, when you see ministry groups, that could include anything from small groups to other things in the church. But the one that I really want to point out to you is the one that says youth and student ministries. Many of you have teenagers or young people that are involved in our youth group here. I think you would agree what God is doing in and amongst our youth group has been a blessing. I have been thrilled at what I've seen happen here over the last year amongst the young people of our church. We started with about, what, three, four, five, six, and now on some weeks we have 20 plus. <laughs> to God be the glory. It's amazing what we see God doing, and I'm thrilled about it. And as we talked, as we were preparing the budget, one of the things that we did specifically talk about is, is we want to invest the resources that God has entrusted us with in the kingdom. We want to invest them in things that will grow the kingdom. And if God seems to be working in our youth group, then we want to make a significant investment in our youth group. We want to do what we can to bless those kids who are coming and to continue to get the good news to others who we still want to come. And so as a result, we've set aside a significant amount of resources to help with the youth group for the year. And now you may be wondering, okay, what is all that money going to? Well, can I suggest a lot of it's going to be a pizza fund. <laughs> It's going to go to help provide some food for them when they come on Wednesday nights so that each one of them has something to eat. It might go into fuel. It might go into other things. But it's going to go so that these kids can come and hear the good news of Christ and for those who do know Christ so that they can continue to grow in Christ. So if you have a little bit more of a specific question about what we're doing amongst the youth ministry, I'd love to answer those questions for you. So does anybody have any other questions about it so that I can try to answer those for you? You guys are easy. This is wonderful. All right. Well, let's move along here. When it says retreats and events, that will be for the men's and women's retreats. It will also be for our spring retreat as a church when we go up to the mountains. That's some resources that we set aside every year to help those who may want to come who might not be able to afford the whole thing. And so we want to have some resources set aside to help people in need. Also, as you see there, you see Kids Church, which is what's happening in back right now. We also have other things that you see set aside there for, you, for humanitarian aid, um, for Vacation Bible School. And I know from talking to Lewis, I think we might have something going on this year, which looks really exciting. And I hope we're going to be able to provide that information to you relatively soon. But as you get down to churches giving, I wanted to explain a little bit of that to you. We give every year as a church 7% to the International Baptist Convention of all of that, all the resources that we receive. Now, you might wonder, well, what do those resources go to? Let me see if I can explain that to you a bit. When that money comes in, the International Baptist Convention, once they receive it, they use it and they turn around and they put it into missions as well. They work with several different organizations of which actually bless things here regionally where we live. They work with one organization called the International, or excuse me, the, um, uh, I think it's called the International Baptist Federation, I think is what it's called. Um, I, I, and anyway, the long story short of it is, is that organization, they are planting churches all throughout here in Eastern Europe. And actually, some of these churches, we've had a chance to be involved in seeing them planted, even though you might not have known that. 
And so as a result, there are several churches here in Eastern Europe because of you and other churches like us. And so that's one of the things that we have a chance to be part of. They also invest in an organization that does a lot of work both in India and Africa. And that organization not only works on gospel-oriented projects, but sometimes they will go and they will drill a well in a community that has no water to drink. They'll go and they'll help with humanitarian needs there as well. And so they do a lot of work like that as well. And the other organization that I know that they specifically work with works a lot in South America. And so I wanted you to know that when we give those resources, they're not just going into a dark hole. They're actually going to get the gospel out to those who need to hear it around the globe. And so that's one of the reasons why we invest 7% of all that we receive here in the International Baptist Convention. Now, as you move down, because we are a member of the Romanian Baptist Union, we do give an amount to them every year that they ask us to do, and we gladly do that because they've been a blessing to us to allow us to exist. Literally, we could not be registered as a church if it wasn't for them, and so we want to bless them, and so that's what that amount is set aside for. But the final 3%, we believe that we want to be giving at least, if not more than 10%, we want to be giving at least that amount to the work of the gospel. And so the final 3% that we have set aside, that 76.45 that you see there this year, we would like to, every year we designate that for a specific missions project, a specific individual, a specific um, family that's involved in the ministry. And this year, we have made, we've made the suggestions to the, to the budget committee. Most agreed with it, and I would like to make the suggestion now to the church that we would like to designate this 3% in the year of 2023 for Stuart and Deborah as they follow God's leading in their life. So what, the first thing I would like to ask, do you have any questions about how we're using the money for missions? Okay. If there are no questions about that, then we will assume then that we are okay in designating that money for Stuart and Deborah, that 70, 76 45 that we will give specifically to them probably in monthly installments throughout the year. And as we do, I'm sure that Stuart and Deborah will report back to us and we'll be able to see the progress of how God is working in their life and as God is continuing to lead them. And that will allow us not only to stay better connected with them, but it will allow us to see specifically how God is leading them. And hopefully we'll be able to celebrate that as well as they get closer to the next steps of the ministry that God has called them to. Okay, and as we continue to move down there, when you see special projects, those sometimes are different ministry things that people will come up with, an idea. As an example, a few years ago, some came to us and said, you know what, we want to bless those in our community. And so they did this thing that was surrounded around Christmas where we bought gifts to bless different families, and we took the gifts to them so that we could try to encourage them to come to our Christmas program. Well, these are special projects, and we have to have resources to do those, and that's the reason why we set aside resources for that. As you see there, there is the Church New Building Fund, and there's resources that have been set aside for that. And there's going to be more to come about that here in the new year, and I'll be able to talk to you more about some of the plans and some of the hopes that we have as a church. But we want to start planning for that. We want to start setting aside resources for that so that we can be prepared when that time comes. And then finally, as you see there, when it says Sunday events and administration, that can be everything from buying paper to run the printer to keeping the lights on, other things. So we, we want to make sure that we have the resources to continue to function and to do the ministry for which God has called us to. As you make your way over to the right side of the budget, you see there, these are the, the, the thing there that talks about bank fees, which a lot of times is nothing more than wiring fees as we move money from here to Germany and other places like that, which we are involved in. Care for the pastor, what that is there is that the International Baptist Convention, of which we are part of, they have a couple of conferences every year that they would like for the pastors of the churches to participate in. One is actually coming up here in the month of March. It is their ministry leadership conference, which the pastors go to. It's, it's, it's a time to go to, yes, to be refreshed in ministry, but also to do some training, to continue to learn on things that specifically relate to international churches. And so that will take place in March. And then they have their annual general meeting for all of their churches next October. And in October, they would like for us to go, and that's when they make decisions that will affect all of the churches. And so that's what those resources are set aside for so that we can participate in those meetings. Finally, you see there the, the building utilities, the, the, the costs for running this building, and you see the things that are set aside for doing that here in this year. 
And then below that, you see the salaries and the taxes involved for each. Now, you might sit there and say, well, we know that Stuart is stepping away. We had made a decision that we wanted to bless Stuart for his years of service here. And not only were we going to set aside the 3% to help be a blessing to them, but we had made a decision that we wanted to pay Stuart's salary from January through March to bless them, to help them to make a good transition to the states. And so that's what the 21000 there is reflective of. It's three months' salary for Stuart. It's been set aside for him. So that's what that amount is for. The bookkeeper fee has been set aside for the lady who keeps track of our books every single month. And the, the, below that is the 17000 is the taxes on each one of those salaries. So if you have any questions at this point, I want to try to see if I can't answer any of the questions, anything that wasn't clear. Maybe there's something that you feel like is missing that we can bring up, we can talk about. Um, if, if there's anything here that you feel like we need to adjust or change, please feel free. Yes, Eva. Uh huh. Uh, I, I believe it is, um, and I'll, obviously this is one of the things that because I know Stuart was being paid at I think it was five hundred euro I think a month. I, mean, I got to do the conversion on that, so I think that that is included in that. But we we, we have to go back and adjust it and see. Um, that's a really good question. Yes, the van. Um, what we, what we really need to figure out is, is the specific amount that we think we're going to use, because I don't think we ever were given a specific amount, and we can make the adjustment on the budget in that regard. What I, what I will tell you, on the budget, the budget can be adjusted by drawing another quick meeting together later in the year, which we have done, um, where we'll take five minutes out of a service, we'll present, we're making this adjustment to the budget, the membership will vote on it, and then we'll put that into the record. So that is something that can be done. We just need to put the amount in that we want to use for the van, and then we can reflect that in a later, in a later meeting. Yep. Any other questions? Boy, you guys are really easy. I've had meetings where I've had 10, 12 different questions this morning, one or two. This is great. I love it. All right. Well, if we have no other major questions, what we need to do then, Eva, is we need to come up with, for those of you who participated in the budget committee, what we will try to do is maybe send that message out to you again with the amount that we're going to reflect for that. We'll make that quick change, and then we can bring it back to the church for another vote. Okay? All right. Well, if there's no other questions at this point, then what I would like to do at this point is to simply make a motion that we accept the budget as it has been presented for 2023 with the understanding that we might make a small change for the van. Um, uh, if there are no other questions, let me make that motion. Anyone who would second the motion for me? Okay, Lewis seconds the motion. Okay, and at this point in time, all of those of you who are a member of the International Church who agree with the budget as it has been presented, if you could show that you are accepting the budget for 2023, can you do so by putting your hand up? Wonderful. Okay, and for anyone who maybe is opposed to it, that's perfectly okay. We accept that. Anybody who would be opposed to the budget as it has been presented, you can do so by showing so with the same sign. Wonderful. Well, the budget has been accepted as it has been presented, and we will put that to work, and we're going to trust that God is going to do something significant through it here over this next year. Well, as I shared with you, I said that I would have a few words for you this morning. And I'd like to share them with you by just doing a little bit of a review. In 2022, if you recall, we started last year by saying, Lord, we want you to stretch our faith. How many of you feel like your faith was stretched? <laughs> our friends from Ukraine say, my arm is not long enough. <laughs> I would agree. This past year, we did not know what God had in store for us. We were coming out of a pandemic, and then the end of February last year, all of a sudden, God puts us in the middle of a brand new crisis, and he stretched our faith in ways that I don't know that any of us could have envisioned. But would you not agree, through it all, he was faithful? Amen? He has been faithful. He has been good, and I believe that he will continue to be faithful and good as we move into 2023. As we move into 2023, I want to give you another challenge for this new year, and it will sound a little bit like the challenge 
of 2022 with a slightly different twist on it. You see, this past year, we said, Lord, take what we have, what you've already instilled in us, and just stretch it as much as you can. It's like taking a rubber band and seeing how far you can pull it apart. Well, this year, I don't want him just to see how far he can pull the rubber band. I want him to give us many rubber bands, and I want him to stretch them as far as they will go. I want to see how much he can not just stretch our faith, but will he not increase our faith and help us to take steps of faith to do things that, honestly, humanly, we couldn't do. I remember back in 2006 when I became the pastor of this church, I never would have dreamed that God brought us here to help see this building built. I didn't come here to build a building. I came here to build a church. But yet God worked in ways that was extraordinary. To simply give you the simple summary of it, God moved us into the facilities that you see, and the church has a church home, and the church paid less than $50,000 for everything you see. Now, how does that happen? Only he can do it. I believe God's got incredible things in store for us this year as well. But in order for us to see those things happen, I truly believe that he is going to want to stretch your faith. He's going to want to stretch my faith. He's going to need to give us more faith so that we can follow him, maybe down roads that maybe don't always make sense, but they do to him. And he will lead us to a place that will not only be the center of his will, but he'll lead us to places where we will see his kingdom grow, we'll see lives changed, we'll potentially maybe see our city influenced. So with that in mind, I want to ask you a few simple questions. Anyone here interested in seeing this church grow, not just spiritually, but also in number? I mean, this is extraordinary. The room is filling up. Wouldn't it be awesome if we need a bigger boat, if we need a bigger room? How many of you would be interested in that? How many of you would like to see lives changed weekly? Remember the day of Pentecost when it took place? The Spirit of God came in power. And in the Scriptures, it doesn't lie. It says in one day, 3,000 put their faith in Christ. If it happened then, it can happen now. Amen? Anyone interested in seeing this church be part of changing the world? I know I am. I want God to significantly work in each of our lives to not just change my home, not just change my neighborhood, my community, my city, but if he's willing to change our world. And I want to be part of that. Friends, if we're going to see that happen, can I suggest it's going to require things of our faith that maybe most of us just aren't acquainted with. Let me see if I can explain to you why I say that. See, the Scriptures tells us in Hebrews chapter 6, or Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, that without faith it's impossible. It's completely 100% impossible to please our Lord. For whoever would draw near to God must first, yes, believe that He exists, but that even more, He will reward those who diligently, and might I suggest obediently, seek Him. As we're going to talk here in a moment, you're going to see obedience has an awful lot to do with faith. There's some examples of that. As the writer of Hebrews continues, he says in the very next verse that Noah showed how much faith he had, how much he believed by what he did. Listen to how he describes it in verse 7. By faith, Noah being warned by God concerning events yet unseen. Imagine God says to him, Noah, you've never seen rain before. You've never seen a flood, but there's one coming, and you're going to need to build a boat. And as you build this boat, that boat is going to be for your protection and for the protection of your family. Now, he could have been just like any of us, probably and be like, rain, boat, flood, what? But he believed. He trusted. It says that... Concerning events that he had not seen in reverent fear, he constructed the ark for the saving of his house. 
Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord because the Lord saw who he was, that he was a man of faith. The writer of Hebrews continues in the very next verse, and he speaks of another champion of faith. He speaks of Abraham when he says the following, By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he went out, notice, not knowing where he was going. I'm calling you, Abraham, to leave Ur. I'm calling you to leave Terah, your father, and I'm calling you to go to a place you know nothing about. But I'm going to promise you, when you get there, I'm going to give you a wonderful place to live. And I'm going to make out of you a great nation. Now, like I said, for most of us, it would be like, okay, I'm not sure. Noah went. He trusted God to do exceedingly above and beyond what he could think or imagine, and God did just that. He says, count the stars in the sky, the sands on the seashore. This is what your inheritance will be like. This is what the posterity of your life will be. You will have this great nation that will come from you. And as we know, as Abraham aged and as he got older, God gave him a son. He gave him a son by the name of Isaac, and Isaac... As he became a young boy, God gave Abraham this message. Okay, Abraham, you left your home, and you've come here to Canaan. Now I'm going to ask you to give me your son back. I want you to go and to sacrifice him to me. I want to see just how much faith you have. And the writer of Hebrews describes what he did when he says this in verses 17 to 19. By faith, Abraham when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. And notice his faith. Notice what it says in verse 19. Abraham reasoned. The reason he was willing to do it, he reasoned that God could even raise the dead, that he could raise Isaac back to life. And so in a manner of speaking, he did receive Isaac back from from death. God blessed Abraham because of his faith, but he demonstrated his faith by what? By what he did, by obedience. You know, several years ago here in Europe, there was another war that raged. At the time, there was a regime in Germany known as the Nazis that were raining terror all over this continent. And as a result, many people's lives were being harmed, and many people were losing their lives, and they were losing their possessions, and it was a horrible time here in Europe. But there was one young man from Germany who believed that God had called him to make a difference. He believed, he had faith, he trusted that God wanted to do something significant through his life. But he knew he couldn't just talk about it. Faith just spoken, faith just in word meant nothing. It had to be expressed by what he did. He ultimately ended up giving his life for his faith. There's a man that many of you heard of. His name was Dietrich Bonhoeffer, and I want you to listen to how he describes his own faith. Faith is only real when there is obedience, never without it. And faith only becomes faith in the act of obedience. You see, friends, we express what we believe by what we do. So I want to ask you, as you look at what God is doing in your life, what price are you willing to pay? What cost are you willing to give in relation to the faith that God has put in your heart and your life? So what I want to ask is this. What would it look like for each of us? What would it look like in your life? What would it look like in my life in 2023 if God was going to increase our faith? What would that practically look like? What would that mean? Can I suggest this is where it's going to start? It will require from you, it will require from me something extraordinary. And actually, this is precisely what the disciples talked about when they were talking to Jesus. They said to him the following, Lord, we want you to 
increase our faith. And listen to what he said in response. If you had faith like the grain of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Can I suggest, I truly believe what Jesus was talking about there in a lot of ways has to do with obedience. In Matthew chapter 17, verse 20, Jesus uses a very similar illustration in answering a different question, and he says the same thing, but he uses a different term. He doesn't say that you could say to this tree, be ripped out and planted in the sea. He says you could say to this mountain, move from here and be cast into the sea. Now, I have to tell you, I'm not so sure that what he was saying was, tree, be gone. Go to Brashov, Brashov, go over to the Black Sea. I, I don't think that that's necessarily what he was saying. Through the years, I've had the opportunity as the pastor here at the church to help those that are in crisis, and sometimes that takes the form of counseling where I will meet with an individual or a couple. And as I have, we've had the opportunity to talk through how sometimes problems create themselves. And in the Bible, it tells us in, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 34, that every day has enough trouble of its own. And what that simply means is that if you don't deal with the trouble or the, or the problems of that day in that day, if you let the sun go down upon them, that particular problem that you have this day, it gets carried to the next. And then the two problems that you have in this day, if you don't deal with them, they get carried to the next. And before you know it, in a couple's life, all those problems have built a small wall of partition or a mountain, so to speak, in their lives. And as a result, they feel divided. They don't feel like they're close with each other. But what I've had the opportunity to share with them was the very same words that Jesus shared with the disciples. When the disciples say, Lord, increase our faith, he says to them, well, if you had the faith of this tiny grain of mustard seed, it is actually the smallest seed in existence is a tiny little seed that will grow into a large tree. It says, if you had the faith of this tiny seed, just that much faith, you can see extraordinary things happen. Just like he said to the religious leaders, you could say to this mountain, be moved into the deepest sea. And when I would talk with these people that I would be counseling that are in crisis, this is what I would say to them. You know what I believe the Lord wants, to you, wants from you? That mountain can be moved but it's going to require not just faith, it's going to require obedience. What do I mean by that? It's going to take a little bit of faith, just a grain of faith to say, Lord, today we're going to sit down and we're going to work on this problem, and we move it out of the way. And then tomorrow we're going to work on this problem, and we move that out of the way. And then the next day we work on this one, and we move that out of the way. And before you know it, that mountain starts to crumble. It starts to come down, and that wall of partition is no longer there. The things that had divided you are no longer there. That mountain has been moved. Friends, I truly believe that if the Lord is going to increase our faith, if he's going to take us to some place that we cannot imagine in 2023, it's going to require not just, yes, Lord, I believe, it's going to require, here I am, Lord, what do you have of me? What do you want me to do? How can I follow? How can I obey? So what would this look like practically for each one of us this year? What would it look like for him to increase our faith in 2023? Can I suggest it's going to start by requiring obedience in the word and in prayer. You can't say you want to be close with him and spend no time with him. I remember, Lewis, several years ago, I used to work with the young people in the church, and one of the conversations that we used to have was, if you had a boyfriend or a girlfriend, we would talk about the fact that we'd say, how close do you think you could be with your boyfriend or your girlfriend if you only see them once every six weeks and you only talk to them once during that period of time? And they'd all say, well, we're not going to be very close. And then I would look at them and say, well, how close do you think you can be with your Lord Jesus if you're doing the same thing? Friends, it's the same for each one of us. You cannot walk in intimacy with your Savior and not spend time with him. It is truly an act of obedience. 
It is that thing that says, I need you, just like we sang just a little bit ago. This is the air I breathe. He is the air I breathe. He's the thing that keeps us going every day. He's the thing that gives us life. And if we're not spending time with him, we cannot be intimate with him. So when is the last time that you opened that and truly said, talk to me? When is the last time as he spoke to you from what you read that you said, Lord, I clearly see this, and you talk back to him? When is the last time that you had that conversation with the one who made you? Friends, if it's not regular, i got to love you enough to say there's no way you can be close with him. No way at all. So in 2023, if he's going to increase your faith, can I suggest it's going to start here? That's where it must start. That's where it starts for each one of us. Yes, it's going to start by stopping the things in your life, that the busyness, the, 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 the circumstances, pressing the pause button for it, just enough time for you to listen to him and for you to talk to him. It's going to start there. But can I suggest for some of you, it might mean you need to get involved in a connect group because you need some brothers and sisters who you can rub shoulders with, who can speak truth into your heart and into your life, and you can receive from them the same. Some of you, it might involve coming here on Sunday morning and saying, you know what? I just want to talk to my Savior, and I want to be with other brothers and sisters when I do it. So I'm going to come to the, the prayer meeting that meets at 930, and we're going to fill that room up, and we're going to seek his face, and we're going to say, Lord, increase our faith and lead us to places that we cannot see. Do through us things that we, we cannot do on our own, but we know what we can do through you. So, friends... If you really want God to increase your faith this year, can I suggest it will not happen apart from him. You have to spend time with him. So in 2023, if you want to see your faith increase, can I suggest it's going to require the obedience that will lead you to say, I need him like the air that I breathe. I need him like the food that I eat. And so I'm going to come to the feast that he's prepared for me every morning. And I'm going to listen to what he has for me. And I'm going to talk to my Savior. And I'm going to share with him my, my heart. And I'm going to allow the Spirit of God to use his word to transform my heart and my mind. That's where it will start. Let me also give you something else that I think is going to require of us. The second thing I think it will require of us is intentional gospel relationships. We spent this past autumn, or if you're from the States, we call it fall. <laughs> we spent this past autumn making our way through this study that we called intentional. And it was all about being intentional with those around us. You rub shoulders every single day, yes, with people in your home, with your family, maybe with your roommate. But you also rub shoulders with those that you work with, with those that you go to school with. You rub shoulders with people all the time, many who need Jesus, who do not know what it means to know forgiveness of sins and the hope of eternal life. They don't know that. You do. Can I love you enough to ask you, why are you keeping it to yourself? Why are you hoarding it away? They need what you have. This is going to require of each one of us a decision that says, I'm going to start intentionally praying for that one, that neighbor, that coworker, that one that I desperately want to see know Christ. Some of you might recall when we went through one of the particular lessons in the intentional series, I handed out to you a card. I made a copy of mine. I wanted to show it to you again. I'm not going to specifically tell you the names, but there's a mechanic on here. There is a gentleman that I got to know through this church over the last 10 years that I've been pouring my life into and our next door neighbors. And I've specifically written down on here, not just things I want to be praying about, but specific actions that I'm going to take 
so that I can build into their lives. Who are you praying for? Who are you intentionally praying, God, give me an opportunity? Give me an opportunity to speak truth into their heart and into their life. Maybe you say, I'm not sure how to do it. You know what? If you pray, I believe the Lord will show you, and then you just follow where he leads you. I know with each one of those that I've listed there, I've gotten to know these people because I've developed friendships with them, and I know how to relate with them. One of them I know I can go get coffee with any time, and we can continue our conversation. Another, because they are neighbors, they have small children. We'll have them over to play with the puppies that we have now. We have them over to do other things with them. And as a result, we just continue to build into their lives with the hope that they will open, that, that, that the Spirit of God will open their heart and allow us to speak truth into their lives. Friends, that's not going to happen without taking intentional steps to see it happen. It will not just happen. Satan will do everything that he can to keep you from sharing the good news with them. Therefore, you must be intentional. It will not happen just on its own. That's why I say intentionally pray about it. Intentionally take steps to see it happen. Are you doing that? I believe in... 2023 here at the International Church, if we want to see the Lord increase our faith, we have to, in obedience, intentionally take steps to get the gospel to those who need to hear it. And that's not just a pastor. That's each one of us. We've been all called to get the gospel to our friends who need it. And so that's the second thing I believe it's going to require of us. And let me show you the third thing I think it's going to require of us. I also believe it's going to require kingdom motivated sacrifices. Pastor, what are you talking about? As I sit here today, I can't tell you 100% that I know. Last year, as we started 2022, we didn't know that a war was going to begin, did we? Did it cost any of us anything? It did. You can count on it. It'll cost you your time. It'll cost you your talents, the gifts, the abilities God has given you. It might even cost you some treasure. But you know what? Those sacrifices are waiting for you in eternity. The Lord takes notice, and he will reward you for every single one. In 2023, we don't know if the war will continue. We don't know if it will expand. We don't know if there's going to be some other cataclysmic event that will take place that will change our lives. But here's what I do know. We have a God in heaven who is faithful and has been faithful in 2022 and will continue to be in 2023. Amen? He will see us through. So... I believe we just simply need to be ready. Lord, here am I. Use me. Here am I. Do through me your will, whatever that requires of me. You know, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, when the war started back in the 30s and the 40s, he had no idea what it was going to require of him. He just made himself available. Ultimately, he paid the ultimate sacrifice for it. I would like to just simply suggest that we need to be prepared to say, Lord, everything I have comes from you. It belongs to you, and I'm willing to give it back to you. If we are willing to do that, I believe he will increase our faith, and he will do, as he said, exceedingly above and beyond anything you or I could ever think or imagine. How many of you are ready for that in 2023? I know I am. I'm tired of the common. I want to see God do the extraordinary. I want to see him change our city. I want to see him change lives. Amen? That's what I want to see happen this year. So as we wrap up our time, we're going to spend a little bit of time singing here in a moment. This is what I want to encourage you to do.
right there where you are. Maybe it's with your family. Maybe it was with some friends sitting around you. I want you to draw together with two or three or four, and here's what I want you to do. Pray. Lord, increase our faith. Increase our faith. Help us to trust you for things that are bigger than me. It's easy to say, Lord, feed me today. <laughs> it's easy to say, Lord, can you give me some shelter? Ask him for bigger things. Ask him for that coworker at work that nobody likes, that nobody wants to talk to, that you think is beyond the gospel. He can change that person's heart. Amen? Trust him for something that's bigger than you. And let's see what God will do. Pray, God, increase my faith in 2023. Can you do that? Let's get together in groups and let's pray for God to do that here in our church. And let's see what he will do.
going to ask the worship team if they can make their way to the stage. As they're making their way up here, I want to encourage you to stand with us. I know Martin asked me earlier in the week how we could close the service, what song to sing, and he said the Lord was putting on his heart this song, and I think it's pretty appropriate. As you sing, I hope that you will sing words that are reflective of where your heart is at, that you want to see God do something extraordinary this year. I know I do. It's extraordinary for me to be part of this family. But I'm looking forward to see God do something through each of us that's above and beyond. So let's sing and let's lift up his praise and let's let him know how much we want to see him do that. Amen. we go. I intentionally stuck this in here because I wanted to show this to you before we go. This is what I want us to do this year. I want us to continue to pray that the Lord will increase our faith in two ways, that he might help us with the current opportunities we have, and each one of us do. You live with, you work around, you have people in your lives that need Jesus. Let's be intentional about it. Let's be ready and say, Lord, here am I. Use me. Use what I have to reach them. And then let's pray, diligently pray. Lord, as we move into 2023, there are future possibilities. There's things that I know you want to do. Use us. Do exceedingly above and beyond what I can imagine. Amen? Lord Jesus, we thank you for what you've done amongst us today. We look forward to 2023 and what you're going to do amongst us. We trust you, and we ask you to increase our faith. Use us to do your will. May Jesus be glorified through our lives 
and through the international church. Go with us now, we pray. Help us this week, Lord, to take advantage of every opportunity we have to get the good news out. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a blessed week.